Good evening, dear viewers. Welcome to this week's special edition of Open Mic with my guest for this evening, Mr. Jakob Ali El Hilo. He is the regional director for Africa at the UN Development Coordination Office, and uh, he is heading the delegation uh, for the uh, Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework that has been launched here in Eritrea uh, together with the UN country team. Thank you for your time, Thank you Mr. Jakob. Okay, so can you explain uh, when and how the new cooperation framework was launched and uh, what was your main message to the people of Eritrea when the UN and the government launched it together? Thank you very much and uh, um, I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity to, um, to speak to you and uh, through your uh, outlet um, to the people of uh, Eritrea. We uh, arrived uh, in Asmara on uh, Monday, uh, it was uh, a warm welcome that we received from the government of the state of Eritrea. Um, and the chief purpose, as you have rightly uh, indicated, was uh, for us to uh, join the launch uh, on Tuesday of the new uh, United Nations uh, Strategic uh, Development Cooperation uh, Framework with the state of Eritrea. This launch took place uh, on Tuesday at, uh, here in Asmara, and it was, uh, of course, the beginning of a very uh, full program of engagement that we've been having since then um, with uh, senior government officials, uh, with uh, development partners. Uh, we also had the opportunity to travel uh, uh, out of Asmara and visit uh, sites where development programs have been uh, implemented. So um, this uh, team that has traveled from uh, the regional uh, uh, headquarters of uh, quite a number of UN agencies, funds and programs uh, comprises about 10 or 11 regional directors or uh, their representatives. Uh, and I think this shows also the importance of uh, Eritrea, both uh, people and government, uh, for the United Nations. Uh, this framework is uh, going to guide the collective efforts of the United Nations development system over the next five years uh, in our partnership with uh, the state of Eritrea, uh, working to uh, provide that package of expert support uh, in different sectors according to the development vision of uh, Eritrea. So it's an important uh, framework that will uh, be put to good use uh, immediately, it basic services, support, uh, uh, and uh, many other uh, areas which fall squarely under the development uh, vision of Eritrea. It's great to be here. So, Mr. Yukub, can you summarize the critical elements of the cooperation framework? Yes, the cooperation framework is, uh, as I said uh, just now, uh, captures the collective uh, contribution uh, by the United Nations to uh, work with the government and people of Eritrea uh, in Eritrea's quest uh, to realize the sustainable development goals. And, uh, in that uh, uh, context, you will have uh, programs for basic service delivery support, you will have programs for capacity development, you will have programs also related to uh, um, tapping uh, Eritrea's uh, natural resources uh, that will contribute, of course, to supporting sectors uh, such as health, uh, education, uh, and other basic uh, services that the government is providing uh, to the people of Eritrea. Um, this is uh, a, s a framework that is also used with other uh, countries, uh, other member uh, states of the United Nations system. We're very excited about this one here in Eritrea because it uh, was developed over the last several months in a highly uh, consultative process with the government uh, of, uh, of Ethiopia. Um, 
and uh, the priorities that have now been agreed uh, are very much nationally led, nationally owned. And uh, it is now our uh, responsibility at the United Nations to ensure that uh, all the capacities required, all the resources required uh, to deliver on this package of part partnership over the next uh, five years. This runs from 2022 to uh, 2026. Uh, it is now our responsibility to ensure that what we committed to do in this partnership with the with the government of Eritrea gets delivered. Mr. Jacob, um, you've also interacted uh, and ha held uh, uh, briefings uh, with various line ministries. Uh, how did the meetings go? Excellent. Uh, these were very constructive discussions we've had, very open and frank uh, and uh, honest uh, discussions. Uh, we've uh, witnessed all uh, readiness on the part of the different ministries and other senior uh, government officials that we have had the honor of meeting with uh, to continue building on all the cooperation that has been uh, taking place between Eritrea and the United Nations uh, and committing uh, both of us uh, and pledging to build on that and take this partnership to an even higher and more strategic uh, level. Uh, we are very uh, gratified and very satisfied by the uh, spirit with which these discussions took place. But also, um, it is important for me to say that we were uh, very encouraged by the clarity of the vision. Uh, you can almost uh, say the unique vision for development that uh, Eritrea has uh, adopted, and which offers a number of good practices um, that we at the United Nations also think these are lessons to be learned and maybe uh, replicated uh, elsewhere. Uh, the cooperation framework, as I mentioned earlier, um, discusses a number of issues. Um, climate change, for example, is one key area where the space is going to be created for cooperation and uh, transfer of uh, expertise and knowledge. Uh, to um, grow the programs that Eritrea has already implemented mm -hmm. uh, in order to adapt, but also in order to address uh, the challenges posed by climate uh, change. One of our uh, uh, field visits that took us to uh, Areza uh, was uh, to actually witness a program that has already been completed. Uh, it's a solar uh, site, solar power, power, power plant, uh, plant uh, that has been uh, uh, implemented in partnership between the government of uh, Eritrea, the European Union, and the United Nations Development uh, Program. This uh, plant is now providing uh, electricity to about uh, 28 villages, I believe, plus the urban uh, center itself, uh, mm -hmm. Reza. Uh, providing electricity to 30,000 people directly, uh, in addition to about 10 to 15,000 uh, people who are indirectly benefiting from the power supply in, in schools, in um, clinics, uh, and, uh, and so on. This uh, is a model that precisely uh, reflects how the world should behave. Um, this is exactly how uh, governments should take serious action to address the, di the, 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 the effects of climate change. This is renewable energy, this is not polluting the environment, and this is transforming lives. That part of the country has been historically off-grid, has not been supplied through the national grid. Now you see the transformation that is taking place, also economically speaking, because households are now able to power their economic activity in all different sectors, including in agriculture, in water supply, uh, in businesses. Um, so uh, I'm singling out uh, climate change uh, precisely because mm. it's a, a priority for the world. For the world and it is the through programs like this that we, as a community of nations around the globe, will be able to reverse the diverse effects of climate change. So. Uh, Eritrea is setting uh, the table on this and uh, the programs that we have seen 
uh, we believe should be replicated in Eritrea, but also in other countries, as Eritrea has been able to do. Mr. Yacoub, can you describe the launch ceremony of the cooperation framework from your point of view? And how did it go? It went well. The launch took place, uh, uh, I believe, at the presidential uh, office. Uh, it was presided over by the Ministry of uh, Finance and uh, National Development. It was attended by quite a number of senior government officials. Uh, Eritrea's uh, permanent representative to the United Nations in New York, who is also with us here uh, this week, uh, was also present. Plus all the colleagues from the United Nations family, both, of course, the UN resident coordinator here. Uh, you know her very well, Ms. Amma Kobe Sande, but also the heads of the UN agencies present in Eritrea. The regional team that we traveled with uh, uh, come from different UN uh, organizations. Uh, I will try to remember all of them. Uh, it includes the Economic Commission for Africa. It includes the World Food Program, the United Nations Development Program, the World Health Organization, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the Office of the High Commissioner for Refugees, the International Organization for Migration, the United Nations Industrial uh, Development Organization, UN Habitat, and uh, uh, I may have missed one or two, but it's quite a large team. It's about 25 people who actually arrived here on, uh, on Monday, and I think you have been seeing them moving mm -hmm. around uh, the capital, but also uh, outside the capital. Thank you. So mm -hmm. what was your, over, your overall in takeaway from the launch of the cooperation? Serious commitment mm -hmm. um, by the government of Eritrea mm -hmm. to engage, mm -hmm. to grow the partnership that already exists, but to take it to scale, and uh, to also provide all the facilitation that is required to uh, ensure the speedy and efficient implementation of these agreed programs mm -hmm. in the different sectors. Uh, we did not find any resistance to the ideas or to the uh, plans because these have been jointly developed by the government and by the United Nations. So the launch comes at the very end of the process uh, because the work begins now. And everything that has been agreed in this framework uh, is actually uh, contributing to Eritrea's uh, development vision that has already been uh, adopted by the country. So ours is a role to, through this partnership, support the realization of, uh, of that vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jacob, I want to remember what you've quoted, and you said, put the UN at work, let us work, and which uh, Ms. Am has quoted uh, yesterday in the video that, that we've seen. So is that what we are to expect? We want to be put to work um, for the benefit of the great people of uh, Eritrea. Eritrea is a proud member of the United Nations. Eritrea is a proud African country. Eritrea is showing the way on development that it has devised according to its own context. Uh, the role of the United Nations is indeed to support that uh, process, uh, as it is all guided by the 17 Sustainable uh, Development Goals. And you know, the world is really very fast coming to the end of the process at which uh, we will see if we have been able to uh, implement programs that will help countries uh, achieve the sustainable uh, development uh, goals. So yes, we are ready to be put to work, and of course, the presence uh, and operations of the United Nations uh, in Eritrea is upon the invitation of the government. Uh, the UN operates in countries, of course, in agreement with the government uh, concerned, and in this case, we have uh, received all uh, commitment from the government uh, to create the space and the conditions to allow the UN uh, agencies, funds and programs um, do their work and collectively this work hopefully will contribute to the development vision of Eritrea. Um, so I go back to your speech uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Girgish. Uh, you've mentioned that um, because you come from Sudan, you knew Eritrea uh, when your parents came for their honeymoon 
here. So uh, elaborate on that. And I would want you to tell us this story and perhaps a summary of uh, all the cooperation framework that has been signed for our uh, viewers. Uh, it's my first time to visit Eritrea, but I have grown up uh, in Sudan with Eritrean friends. Uh, we are one people uh, in two countries. And uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the launch, although it is my first time to visit uh, Eritrea, I am not the first member of my family uh, to do so. Uh, why? Because in 1950, my parents came to Asmara on their honeymoon when they got married. So uh, it started then, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this relationship and this affinity. But it also started in Sudan, where uh, both Sudanese and Eritreans uh, live uh, side by side. Uh, we, as I said, uh, went to school together from uh, primary school all the way to university at the University of Khartoum. I do have many Eritrean friends at the United Nations, but also outside the United Nations, and certainly in Sudan uh, itself. So uh, it's a great honor for me, uh, both, of course, as a member of the United Nations family, to be coming at this particularly important moment as we launch this new ambitious cooperation uh, framework. But also at the personal level, it's a great honor for me to finally be able to visit this country. I hope it is not going to be. Uh, let me rephrase. This is the first time I visit, but inshallah, it will not be the last. So, I would like to know, uh, how do you feel about Eritrea in general? Like, you've been here for five days, so I want to know like, how you really feel. You know, you know um, there are many misperceptions about uh, Eritrea. And uh, being here for the last five, six days, we, um, we uh, were given free space to actually interact with the government, with uh, communities, we were given the freedom to move around, um, and that was quite uh, important, um, quite important for us also to understand the context in which uh, development work is taking place in Eritrea, according to its own national vision. It is important also for us to have been here these uh, few days so that we also become Eritrea's ambassadors uh, to the United Nations, and hopefully help change some of the narrative or some of the misperceptions that have been uh, uh, assigned or attached to, uh, to Eritrea. There are many areas for joint cooperation, of course, and over the years, I'm sure we will be able to uh, um, um, help in this evolution. Eritrea is a nascent new nation. Uh, it is building itself, so it's still at the stage of nation building. And uh, the United Nations uh, should provide all the support uh, for one of its uh, member countries to achieve that goal of, uh, of nation building with respect to the choices made by the people of Eritrea, with readiness to strengthen the good practices, and with uh, availability to bring um, uh, whatever capacities the United Nations may be able to deploy here uh, to help in that process. Um, I know that there is also openness from the uh, uh, government of uh, Eritrea that there may have been areas where the practice or the programs may not have been uh, fully uh, successful or correct. Uh, what was encouraging for us is also that there is no shying away from course correction when things are not working well. So this comes, I think, from a, a great sense of national um, um, national uh, confidence that when you say I may have done something wrong and it is possible for us to see how best we can do uh, things right that comes from uh, a great uh, sense of national confidence which which I think is highly uh, commendable which means also uh, there are no fixed uh, uh, you know positions if something is open for dialogue and discussion and agreement so that programs can be implemented in a different way or in a way that will have greater impact for the people, uh, we sense that res readiness was, was there. And that is uh, quite encouraging uh, for us as a system, as a United Nations system, but it's also quite important for 
us to carry this message out of Eritrea. Hopefully, with the uh, possibility to help change some of the misperceptions that have been placed against or on is, uh, Eritrea. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Jakob, um, you are uh, about to leave now. This is uh, your fourth day, and uh, tomorrow uh, it will be the end of uh, uh, your visit here uh, to Eritrea. If you have any messages that you would like uh, to convey to the people of Eritrea, to the UN family here, now is your time. Um, to the great people of Eritrea, at least those we have met in their communities, uh, in Mendefera, in uh, uh, Areza. Uh, we also visited the two dams. We saw uh, the huge accomplishments that have been uh, realized by the people of Eritrea. Um, continue and keep doing what you're doing uh, with that very um, strong national pride that you have shown. Uh, us and uh, keep your head high always uh, the world will come to partner with you and the world will be following you this is your country and uh, it is the responsibility of us all including at the United Nations to uh, support that very proud national vision that we have really witnessed and felt uh, interacting with the people uh, of Eritrea keep it up thank you so much Thank you so much, Mr. Jacob. Dear viewers, that wraps up this week's open mic. It is good night from us.